All right, guys, so I'm in the middle of doing stuff for Respawn Recruits, and I got a, another video to record about the product that Fine Fine has sent out to me. So that's going to be a review in and of itself. But I kind of want to go ahead and talk about today the lack of professionalism that I see from a lot of content creators who are willing to work with other companies or try to get into organizations like uh, gaming organizations, esports organizations, content creation organizations, whatever it may be. And like I said, working with companies, whether it be, you know, companies that are known to be working with content creators or maybe are just now starting to work with content creators. And I kind of want to give my perspective of actually working with some companies. And yes, they might not be the biggest names companies out there, but just my own uh, thoughts and opinions of working with companies and having the ability for them to, you know, look past like me having a lower viewer count or, you know, not pulling a thousand viewers per stream or something like that. Um, and maybe having a smaller uh, footprint as far as in the content creation realm to have them have people, you know, buy their products through me or something along those lines. And uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of companies who are trying to work with content creators and get into the space, make products for content creators or something like that, or seeing the way that they can have, um, I guess, a gateway to more people to buy the products, try their products and stuff like that. And they finding that they can do that through advertising pretty much with a content creator. Um, I think a lot of people are not realizing that more and more companies are starting to do that. We've seen an influx of content uh, creators, you know, being able to reach out to certain companies and those companies are making products specifically designed for streaming and gaming. Are all the products good? No. Are all of them kind of sometimes out of touch and overpriced? Yes. But you're starting to see if you've been paying attention to you know, microphones, uh, mic boom arms, uh, stuff like keyboard and mouses, mouse pads, just anything, lighting, uh, desk mounts, all this stuff. If you just look at Amazon, you take a second to really look and see what kind of equipment and stuff you would use for your content creation. You would start to see that more and more uh, companies are starting to uh, have in their fold something that a content creator or somebody who creates like video format uh, would use. And sometimes even live streamers would use. Uh, again, not all the products are perfect. They're trying to fill out, you know, what needs to be uh, done in that space or wherever to really catch people's attention and get them to buy the products and stuff like that. So it's baby steps, obviously. But with those companies trying to do that, a lot of them are kind of getting turned away and uh, kind of staying away from the people who have lower numbers and stuff. And even sometimes bigger streamers um, and content creators, because a lot of them are catching on that. A lot of content creators lack professionalism, lack, lack decorum, um, which is unfortunate because, again, we have the ability to work with companies as smaller content creators or people who perform um, not to the best, I guess, as other people who get, you know, thousands upon hundreds of thousands of views. We little few that, you know, get like 100 views, maybe a thousand views or something along those lines. Um, we have a unique chance that people didn't have just years ago with being able to personally like reach out to a company, show them a portfolio of, you know, videos we have done. And that's usually what I do when I reach out to a brand new company that might not, you know, want to you know work with me or send me products or something like that. I always send them out my videos. I send them out a detailed professional typed, uh, I don't want to say resume, but, a professionally typed like page introducing myself what I do on my channel and stuff like that for YouTube um, what kind of games and stuff I play on my live streams and then I give them different types of product reviews that I have done whether it be a microphone review keyboard review whatever um, and it's not always like the one that performs the most or whatever with numbers it's the ones that are very detailed and very descriptive and on what the product is, how it functions, how it works, and on top of that, how you can apply it to your content creation, whether it be live streams or video content. And that's what those companies want. They want somebody who's gonna put out the information out there, real world usage of their products and along those lines and everything, because that's going to help them, you know, make sales on the product. 
And like I said, a lot of the companies or wherever, some of them do have a kind of a requirement of how many views you get per video, how many subscribers you have on a platform or followers or whatever. Um, but you can kind of negate that. My requirements for, you know, joining a fine, fine for them sponsoring me or wherever they sent me the page. And I'm like, yo, I can't, you know, make those numbers or anything like that. It's kind of hard for me to, to make those requirements, but because I had already worked with the company for over a year and I had contacts with inside fine, fine, who would send me products and stuff, I just directly asked them and they worked with fine, fine. And they got back to me. They told me, Hey, we're good to go. And that's how it happened. And it's because I kept professional dialogue with them. Every single email was professional. Every time I described or talked about their products and stuff like that, even if I bashed them or said something was bad about the product or something or a negativity about the product, I wasn't talking out the side of my neck. As people would say, I wasn't being rude or disingenuous or, you know, super overly negative or something like that. I wasn't saying derogatory terms or slang or anything like that in any of my videos or live streams or anything like that. And I see a lot of content creators doing that. They will say derogatory statements um, online, offline or wherever they will be exposed for it. They will say a whole bunch of, um, I guess, you know, slang or wherever that would be considered to be okay for some races to say, but not other races to say. And they do all this stuff and they don't realize that at the end of the day, you're hurting your growth potential and you're hurting your own brand. And I'm not saying you can't be yourself and freely, you know, have a freedom of speech and all this stuff or whatever, but it's like, you have to have a level of professionalism. You have to have a level of decorum when you're looking to join certain organizations or work with certain companies, especially like the bigger brand companies and the bigger organizations. Um, that stuff, they're more on a grander scale and a more of a, a bigger stage. So of course they, they want the brand to look squeaky clean. You know, they don't want somebody who's going to be reckless and be like they say, a brand risk, um, and work with them. If they know for a fact, this person is not going to have any kind of professionalism or decorum. Um, I'm not trying to say you have to act like you're in front of a judge, you know, in, in jury and at a court date or something like that. And you have to dress a certain way and you have to act a certain way or whatever in front of a judge and all that stuff. Like, that's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is you have to know what your limitations are. You have to act like you want your brand to succeed. And by sitting there, you know, cussing up a storm, like a sailor, I cuss on stream and stuff too. But when I do these videos, I rarely, very rarely, I think on, in recent memory, I've only cussed one time in one video that I posted or whatever doing product reviews or content creation tips. And it was in a content creation tips uh, video. And I would say like doing that, you know, making sure that you articulate your speech like you are an educated human being. Again, not just talking reckless, talking, you know, whatever that might get you the views or wherever, because, you know, any press is good press, even bad press. Uh, you know, it, that's what people want. They want that shock and awe factor. Um, they don't care if it's uh, hurting somebody else or being negative or whatever. They just want the views and they know if they act mean, ugly or, you know, uh, something that's less, uh, something that would be considered less professional um, in that sense would get them that views and stuff and maybe get gain them a little bit of popularity. But in the long run, that might all be good for short term term, but in the long run, if you want to work with companies, if you want to join certain organizations and stuff like that, you got to keep up positive vibes. You got to remember to keep professionalism and decorum at the forefront. I know it's hard. I, look, I have mental disabilities. I get angry and, and mad or wherever to degrees that you'll probably will never ever experience in your life unless you also have some kind of um, mental illness or infliction or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm able to still on camera maintain a certain level of professionalism and decorum. And like I said, a lot of people just won't do that. And it's it's not good, again, for your brand and your long-term journey for content creation. If you sit there, even if you try to clean up your act now, if you've done anything in the past, even if nobody's called you out for it, just 
make an apology video or something like that, apology tweet, you know, post what, whatever it may be or whatever to clean up your act or whatever and start anew now. Because again, if you want to in the future work with certain companies and be in this content creation journey for a long period of time, you're going to have some type, you're going to have to have some type of professionalism. You ju you're just going to have to because you're not going to see any growth for your brand. You're not going to see any growth for you as a person if you, all you're doing or wherever is being toxic and negative and um, putting that out there through your content. It's just, it's crazy to me how people still to this day don't know how to treat one another, don't know how to uh, present themselves in the public eye. It's, it's crazy. Again, I'm not saying that you have to be, you know, squeaky clean, white glove inspection, like, you know, spotless, but at the same time, you have to understand and be aware and be self-aware. And it's just a lot of people are not. And a lot of people are going to fail at content creation because of it. So hopefully you take these words to heart when I'm saying to you guys, hopefully you continue to have a squirtastic day. God bless you and yours. Deuces, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love.